Hey guys, welcome back to another video and on this one we're going to be doing the best Altaria build for raids on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now this one was actually pretty tricky, I didn't know whether to go for either DPS or support because you can do both and Altaria has amazing defences but we decided to go with a DPS in the end. I will explain to you both builds in the video though when we get to the build but for now let's start off with where to actually get Altaria. So you can get Altaria right here on the map so all you have to do is fly over to Gracia Stones and make your way over. Once you're over here on this part right here we're just going to be looking out for Altaria and Swablu. If you need to, make a fly in our dragon type sandwich and then you can just encounter your Altaria and you can catch it. We're going to be running a dragon type terror so when you catch your Altaria check to see if it's a dragon type terror. If not you will have to waste uh, 50 shards that you didn't need to. Let's get into the build. So like I said we're going to be running the dragon type terror and the item we're going to be using is the metronome. What this does is let's say we attack once we're at 100% damage on that first attack. But if we use that attack again on the second attack we will be at 120% damage and it goes up in 20% every time you attack in a row with that move. So 140, 160 and so on until you reach 200% it maxes out at 200% and if it gets interrupted then the damage is reset let me show you where to get this item right now so if you come to the right side of the map to Lavincia North this is where we're going to get the item and then we're going to be heading in this direction right over here to the Delibird bird shop click on battle items and then we're going to be scrolling down to get the metronome that I showed you earlier. That will cost you 15,000 polka dollars. When you come out of the Delhi Bird shop, I want you to turn right. And we're going to be heading to the Chansey Supply Shop, which is this black and green shop right here. This is where we're going to buy our Nature Mint. Now, our attack and special attack is the same. So we're going to be buying the Adamant Mint. Now, our attack and special attack is the same. But because this Pokemon has access to Dragon Dance, then we're going to be running the physical attack in nature, which is the Adamant Mint. So I want you to go ahead and buy that this will cost you 20,000 so like I said earlier up in attack down in special attack that is the adamant mint now as you can see we haven't got the biggest attack in the world but our special defense is amazing and our defense is really good as well when we go over the moveset I will tell you an alternate moveset that you can use as a support pokemon if that's how you want to go but I do a ton of solo raiding so I went with a dps moveset because Altaria can actually output some nice damage once you get going so our EVs are going to go into HP and attack. If you don't know where to get your EV items, then just go back into the Chansey Supply Shop. The items you're going to need for your HP and attack are HP ups and proteins. You'll need 26 of both of these. So that will cost you 520,000 polka dollars. And then you can max out both these stats. Speaking of maxing out stats, you're going to want max IVs on everything except special attack as well. If you don't know how to actually check your IVs, go on your main menu and then click boxes. And then I want you to hover over Altaria and then I want you to click the plus button on your controller and it will come up with all your IVs. If it says best, then you have a max IV on that Pokemon and you won't need to hyper train it. As you can see, mine says hyper trained, so I've hyper trained all five of my stats that are not special attack. If you don't know how to hyper train your Pokemon, come to any Deli Bird shop and then click on general goods and you can buy the bottle caps. You can trade in one bottle cap for one max IV. So you will need a maximum of five bottle caps, which will cost you a hundred thousand. After you get all the bottle caps you need, I want you to fly over to Montenevra. Once you're here, we're going to be coming to the Obama Snow in the back and next to the Obama Snow, there will be a guy that hyper trains your Pokemon. I want you to click your Altaria and then click Bottle Caps. And then we're going to be clicking HP, Attack, Defense, Special Defense and Speed. And then you can click Start the Training to get your max IVs. Now as for its ability, its normal ability that you will get is Natural Cure if you didn't catch it in a raid. What this does is it heals the user of any status conditions when you switch out of battle. But because we can't switch out of battle, that's useless. And then we have our Hidden ability which is Cloud9. And while Altaria is on the field, it eliminates the effects of all weather types. So let's say you're up against a strong Pokemon that has Rain Dance and Hurricane. So it can use Rain Dance to make sure its Hurricane hits on every single attack. Then it won't be able to set up that Rain Dance. And the same goes with any other weather condition, Sandstorm, Sunny Day, all that stuff. It can't use any of it. Now, if you are running the support build, I would suggest maybe thinking about which ability you want. Because if you use Cloud9 and there's a Coriden on your team, it's going to erase the ability of that sunny day and he's going to power down quite a bit. So maybe if you've got a support build, think about using Natural Cure, even though it doesn't do anything. But for me, I'm using DPS. I'm going to be soloing this po with this Pokemon, so I'm going to be using Cloud9. Now our moveset is going to be Dragon Claw, Dragon Dance, Cotton Guard and Safeguard. Dragon Claw is going to be our most powerful move, it's going to be our attacking move. 
Just a strong dragon type move, 80 power, 100 accuracy. It's going to do a decent amount of damage. Dragon Dance is going to be our setup move. It's going to increase that attack and speed by one stage each. This move is incredible. It's called Cotton Guard and it decreases the opponent's attack by three stages. That's what's going to make this Pokemon so good against them physical attackers. And our last move is going to be Safeguard. This prevents status conditions for five turns. So no sleep, no poison, no paralyze, no burn, which is going to be amazing for certain Pokemon like Amoongus and Breloom, for example, because they both have Spore. Now, if you was to run the actual support build, what you would do is you would change the moveset to Cotton Guard, Helping Hand, Roost, and Mist. And if you didn't want Roost, you could exchange it for Dragon Claw if you wanted to have at least one attack instead of just full-on support. Your ability would most likely not be Cloud9, so you could just use the ability you get when you catch it. Your EVs would not go into HP and attack. I would put them into HP, maybe half special defense and half defense, or fully defense if you really wanted to. Then your defense is closer to your special defense and your bulky on both sides. And your item could be leftovers. Moving on from that though, let's continue with our DPS build. So we learn Cotton Guard and Safeguard through level up. So once you get to level 100, you can just relearn them whenever you want. So you don't have to worry about those. As for Dragon Claw and Dragon Dance though, we're gonna need to learn TMs to learn them. If you don't know where to get TMs, just come to any TM machine, which is the green part of the Pokemon Center. We're gonna be going to the Dragon section. Gonna be learning Dragon Claw first, which will cost us 8,000 LP, five Axew scales, three Noibat fur, and three Gibble scales. So first, I'm gonna come right here to get our Noibat. So I'm gonna fly over to Fury Falls, and then we're gonna be climbing this wall right here, and you will get to some grass. As soon as you reach the grass, you'll be able to find those Noibat Bat and Noivern, there they are. We're just going to take those out and we will get our Noibat fur. Now for our Gibbles, uh, we're going to fly over to the bottom left corner of the map, the Alpha Nada. And we're going to be heading to this cave in the back over here. So I want you to head towards there. And when you get inside the cave, we'll be looking out for Gibbles and Gabites. Now, if you did use a dragon type sandwich for your Altaria earlier, then it should be pretty easy to find these Gibbles and Gabites. There's a pack of them right there, but they're inside Makahita and Hariyama, so we're not going to get them. So here's another pack. We're going to take those out and that will get us our Gibble Scales. Now for the Axe Shoes, what we're going to do is we're going to come just above the Great Crater. We're going to be coming right here. So what you want to do is you want to fly over to Dally's Zappa Passage. Once you're here, I want you to look up and click your le left trigger so you can see properly. We're going to be climbing the wall that doesn't have a bump. On this side, there's a bump, so you won't be able to get up it properly. We're going to be climbing this side right here. And I'll see you when we get to the top. As you can see, there's loads of Axe Shoes around this area when you get to the top. You can also find uh, fractures, so you just want to take out either of those and you will get your Axew scales. Now to go over TM100 Dragon Dance, we're going to need 5000 LP, 3 Tatsugiri scales, 3 Gibble scales and 3 Noibat fur. We've just been over Gibble and Noibat so you don't need to see those, so I'm just going to show you where to get Tatsugiri. So what we're going to do is we're going to come right here on the map, so I want you to fly over to Kasraya Watchtower number 1 and then jump down off the little cliff. So we're just going to jump down right now. And then all you want to do is you just want to jump in the lake. And the first Tatsugiri you see, it can be the red one. It can be the orangish one. It can be the reddy pinkish one. You just have to take it out and then you will get your three Tatsugiri scales or two, however many you get. And then we'll have enough for our Dragon Dance as well. Now that we've gone over the full build, let's get into some raids. So our first five star raid is going to be a Dragon type slacking. Let's see how it goes. Now this slacking is going to have incredible HP. So I don't expect to do a ton of damage to it until we proper get going and get our terror. But at the same time, it does have Truant. So we're going to start off with Cotton Guard. This will decrease the attack of the slacking by three turns. It's going to use Shadow Claw, and as you can see, it does no damage now because we've just used that move. And now we're going to use Dragon Dance. This will increase our attack and speed by one stage. It uses Shadow Claw on us again. Uh, we're going to use Dragon Dance again, so we're on plus two attack, plus two speed. Going to use Facade. I'm not sure whether this actually... It says Truant. It's popping up but it's not suffering from Truant. So we can only use Dragon Dance now because we're stuck in an Encore, so I guess we'll just keep using Dragon Dance. So Slacking just loafed around for the first time. So I'm guessing sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe it's a bit bugged. So we are just using Dragon Dance here until the actual effects of the Encore wear off. The Slacking removes negative effects from itself. We're under Encore for one more turn, but that Dragon Dance actually puts us on max attack and max speed. So now we're just going to use Dragon Claw. I don't expect it to
bit to kill because of the HP. I didn't think it would do too much damage. The slacking is now loafing around. It steals some of our terror charge, which is really unfortunate because that is what we're after. And then it puts its shield up. It removes negative effects from itself again. We're just going to keep using Dragon Claw here. Then if it puts us in an encore, then we'll just keep doing damage. So we use Dragon Claw again, Slacking's loafing around. We use Dragon Claw again, doing some chip damage to that shield. The shield's are nearly gone now. And now we can terrestrialize into our dragon type terror. Now the slackings are uh, truant. Uh, sometimes it didn't work three times in a row, and sometimes it did work three times in a row. That seems super bugged. Maybe it's something to do with it being a raid boss. Let's see how much damage we do with this dragon claw. Should break the shield. Does break the shield, and it finishes the slacking off. Now that raid probably would have been over with earlier if we didn't get encored but we got it done in the end quite comfortably. Let's move on to the second raid. So onto our second raid, we have a five star dragon type Tyranitar. Let's begin. This is a good example of our ability. Tyranitar has Sandstorm. This is weird, Sandstorm's on the field, but it's not going. Maybe it'll go at the end of the turn, or maybe I've just misjudged this ability, we'll find out. Uh, I'm gonna use Cotton Guard on our first turn. This will decrease Tyranitar's attack by three stages. Oh no, it increases our defense by three stages, Never mind. It's going to use Screech to reduce our defense by two stages, so now we're on plus one defense. Uh, we're going to use Cotton Guard again, so now we're on plus four defense. So we're not taking damage from the actual Sandstorm because of our ability, so that must be it. So the Tyranitar hits us with a Rock Slide, but it only does 30 damage because we just increased our defense by loads. Now we're going to use Dragon Dance. It's using Rock Slide again. It's doing no damage, as you can see. We're going to go ahead and use our second Dragon Dance, so we're on plus two attack, plus two speed. Now, unless it nullifies our stats, we're going to be really strong now just because of that physical defense, and it's not a special attacker, so Dark Pulse that it just used is not doing anything really. We're going to start to use Dragon Claw now until we get our Terror. It uses Screech, so now we're on plus two defense. It removed negative effects from itself, that's fine. We're going to use Dragon Claw, do some more damage. It stacks with the Metronome, sorry. It's going to use Dark Pulse. We're on half health now. We're going to use Metronome again. I mean, Dragon Claw again. So now it's on below half health. It uses Crunch, still doesn't do too much because we're still on plus two defense. It removes negative effects from itself, that's fine. So this is our fourth attack in a row. So it'll do an extra 160% damage because of our Metronome, our held item. And we're going to Terrestrialize and use Dragon Claw, see how much damage we can do. As you can see, this Altaria is amazing against those physical attackers because of that ability, because of that move, Cotton Guard. So we have Terrestrialize, let's see how much damage we can do. We are on plus two at the minute. It does just below a half of the actual shield. It uses Crunch again, and then it uses Sandstorm, and then it uses Dragon Dance. So its attack does go up here. We're going to use Dragon Claw again. I don't think it kills us in one shot unless it nullifies our stats. So we use Dragon Claw. It does a ton of damage, a critical hit, and uh, the shield gets taken down. Now we just need one tap to finish it off, or one of our allies can finish it off. It uses Crunch on us to take us down to 81 health, and then we use Dragon Claw to finish it off. Now the two Pokemon that we faced have both been really defensively bulky. The Slacking and the Tyranitar are either really defensively bulky or they've got a ton of HP and we've still done really well against them and took them out no problem let's move on to the third raid so our third raid is a dragon type a five star dragalga let's see how it goes so this pokemon has a toxic and it also has sludge bomb as well as some dangerous abilities that can poison us so i'm going to use safeguard it's going to use water pulse on us first turn it's fine as long as it doesn't paralyze, I mean uh, confuse. It doesn't confuse and now we're going to use Dragon Dance. So this will get our attack and our speed up by one stage each. It uses Dragon Pulse. Now this thing is a Dragon type as well as being a Terra Dragon type. It doesn't do too much though because we have amazing special defense. If it has the ability adaptability though, this could be quite troublesome, but I don't think it does. Oh, that would have done more damage. Uh, so now we've used one Dragon Dance. Because it is a Dragon type, we're going to just get straight into the Dragon Claws. It's going to use Sludge Bomb. That's going to be fine. It's going to use Draco Meteor. I don't think this will kill. Oh, it's not used it on us anyway. It's special attack harshly drops, that's amazing. So now it can't really do that much damage to us anyway. We're gonna use Dragon Claw again, do a bit more damage, it's on about half health now. Uses Sludge Bomb on us. See now, Sludge Bomb is fine because our safeguard protect us from poison and it's not super effective. So I think we've got safeguard for one more turn. Uh, we're gonna use Dragon Claw again. Let's see what it uses. It steals some of our Terra Charge, which is unfortunate because we were gonna Terra next turn. It uses Sludge Bomb again. We're gonna have to use Dragon Claw one more turn before we can actually Terrestrialize. It uses Dragon Pulse. I don't think that will kill. 
it doesn't, we're on 59 health. So I'm gonna terrestrialize here and attack just because we're either on our fourth or fifth dragon claw. So it will either do 160% damage or 180% damage because of our metronome and the turret on top of that is gonna do a ton of damage, possibly kill actually. At the very least, it'll get it on very low health and break the shield. There it is, it's on very low health now. We do get a critical hit. Poison Point does activate because now we don't actually have that safeguard. So it didn't have adaptability. We broke the shield, uses Draco Meteor. That's fine. When we come back, we can just finish it off. Oh, the Draco Meteor wasn't actually on us. He uses Dragon Pulse on us. That will finish us off. So it actually doesn't finish us off because of the Draco Meteor it just used. And the poison doesn't actually... Uh, damage us which is weird so we're just going to use dragon claw and finish it off we could have finished it off when we come back anyway even if it did kill us like we had plenty of time even if it killed us and that's the third raid done we can even beat the dragon types like if that thing was a physical dragon type that would have been even better because we could have cotton guarded but it wasn't and we still won that's really saying something altaria can be very strong in them raids especially against physical attackers if you want to use it it's a lot of fun. The moveset is kind of a change to what I normally go for, but it's still very strong. And if you want to see a very strong Phalanx build, then click on screen right now, and I'll catch you on the next one.